Good afternoon, everyone. This is Gerson Zelaya from the Carrier Help Desk here at ARC. Uh, in the room, I have with me Sarah Sager, Product Manager for Memo Manager, as well as Hazel Taylor, uh, who is from the Carrier Help Desk as well. And we want to welcome everyone to um, ARC's Memo Manager Part 1. Let me get my screen showing for you. So today, we will be covering um, how to access Memo Manager, uh, the administration roles, uh, the definition of the roles, and also the administration section, what can actually be done within Memo Manager. Um, navigating as well, um, how to navigate the home page, which is a memo summary page, as well as a memo details overview. Uh, so this is the first part of two Memo Manager webinars that we are going to do. The next one will cover um, the topics of creating a memo, closing a memo, reactivating a memo, memo types, corresponding and handling disputes. Uh, so we won't be covering that today. Uh, we'll cover that in the next uh, webinar, Memo Manager Part 2. So look out for when you get the invitation for that. So we're going to start off accessing how to access Memo Manager. First thing that we want to cover is just overall what Memo Manager is. The web-based product that automates the distribution, processing, and settlement of memos between the carriers and the travel agencies. And while I talk about some of the benefits um, of Memo Manager, we want to go ahead and launch a poll here to see uh, how often you use Memo Manager um, so we can kind of have an idea of who we have on the line with us. Uh, so Memo Manager mitigates the travel industry's last remaining large-scale paper-based process. Uh, so now it, it's an electronic format. It reduces the processing time and cost for both carriers and travel agents. It improves the cash flow through electronic payment and communication, provides superior data quality and accuracy, provides easy access for analysis, memo data and history is stored in a central repository, and provides immediate access to the status of a memo. It also simplifies communication between carriers and travel agents, so it's a very useful tool to have. So we see that majority here are daily users, some of them a couple times a week and weekly. So uh, this will definitely be a good uh, refresher for those who use it daily and uh, it will help out the ones who use it rarely uh, to kind of understand uh, the general overview of Memo Manager. So now, uh, Memo Manager is accessed through MyARC, which is ARC's web portal. So you do need a uh, username and password for MyARC in order to be able to access Memo Manager. Uh, your organization's primary administrator or tool administrator will need to grant you access to Memo Manager. And if you don't have access to MyARC, your primary administrator will need to give you access to that first. Once you're logged into MyARC, you will see uh, Memo Manager listed under your tools. And all you have to do is click Memo Manager to open it. If it's your first time accessing Memo Manager, you're going to need to agree to terms and conditions. Then click on Memo Manager again to open up the tool. Uh, it pops up in a separate window, so you want to make sure that you disable your pop-up blocker or that um, you look for a message <coughs> that indicates that a pop-up has been blocked for you to be able to access Memo Manager. And this is what it looks like once it uh, opens up, and we'll go over the different sections for uh, Memo Manager. But first, we want to go over the administration rules. Administration rules. Um, first thing we want to do is clarify that there's a difference between MyARC administration and Memo Manager administration. The difference here being that in MyARC administration, it grants access to the Memo Manager tool. The Memo Manager administration controls the settings within Memo Manager. Um, we'll break down each of these roles that we have listed on here under each section. So starting off with MyARC administration, again, it, it's to grant access to the tool. Um, so the different roles that are available there are the MyARC Primary Administrator, MyARC Tool Administrator, and MyARC User. Uh, the Primary Administrator 
has access to memo manager. Uh, an entity can have only one primary administrator. And the primary administrator can assign or revoke administration access to memo manager. It can assign or revoke user access to memo manager and can assign user roles within memo manager. And if you need to um, create a new primary administrator, change who your administrator is, there's a form that you fill out um, in MyArc, form 235. The MyArc tool administrator has access to memo manager. An entity can have multiple MyArc tool administrators for memo manager. So the tool administrator can assign or revoke user access. It cannot assign or revoke administrator access. And it can assign user roles within memo manager as well. A MyArc user um, has access to memo manager and an entity can have multiple MyArc users for uh, memo manager and they do not have any other uh, administrative rights um, to grant access to the tool for anybody. So once you have access to uh, Memo Manager tool, um, then you'll have to have a role within Memo Manager uh, to be able to control settings within uh, the tool. So the different roles available are Memo Administrator, Memo User, and Memo Corresponder. The Memo Administrator, um, there can be multiple Memo Administrators for entity. Uh, the memo administrator is responsible for the management of the entity settings. They manage the age limits of a memo. They manage the dispute limits. Uh, they manage uh, technical support email and ticketing policy website, and we'll get into these in the next couple of slides. Um, they can create memos. They can accept and reject disputes. They can view memos, and they can send correspondence. And what we see down here is how it's granted within MyArc. So we see that the memo could be the memo manager, my arc role could be my arc user, but within my arc or within memo manager, their role can be selected as memo administrator. So the memo administrator has access to the administration tab, which is on the top right hand corner of memo manager. And when they click on it, it will bring them to the screen that is viewed here. Um, it will allow them to modify the entity administration section. And there are a couple of these that can be changed. For instance, the dispute limit. Um, the memo administrator indicates the desired number of times that an agency is allowed to dispute a memo. Um, and after reaching that dispute limit that's set, the agency will not be able to dispute the memo any longer. So in this case, we have a dispute limit of three. And that's uh, whatever the carrier decides to set the limit at that's where you can input that, the memo administrator can input that information. Aging roll-off, uh, the memo administrator inputs the number of days that can go by before the memos become inactive. Um, so uh, they can set a time period, and if that time period passes, then the memos will become inactive within Memo Manager. Technical support email, um, the memo administrator determines what the email address they would like ARC to contact them with any technical concerns. And this is the email that is used to send audit reports for carriers who load their memos through SFTP. The ticketing policy website uh, is input by the memo administrator, and the agents can reference um, the carrier's ticketing policies there. So that's a good reference point for the carriers to put so the agents can see um, why they're being issued the debit memos or they should know um, the different policies that the carriers have uh, for particular uh, situations. So moving on from memo administrator to memo user, uh, again there can be multiple memo users per entity. The memo user can create memos, they can accept or reject disputes, they can view memos, and they can send correspondence as well. And a memo corresponder, uh, there can be multiple memo corresponders per entity. They can view memos. They can send correspondence. You see they cannot create or close out any memos or do any sort of adjustments to the memos. Uh, they can only view them and send correspondence. And we'll get into how they can uh, send correspondence. And, and the next webinar that we have, we'll get into closing and opening memos. Again, it's important to remember the differences in administration roles available. Um, there's one under My Arc Administration, which grants access to the tool, and then Memo Manager Administration controls the settings. 
within Memo Manager. Um, so it's important to keep those in mind. Before we move on to navigating, I want to point out that we do have the questions section available. You can type in your questions. Uh, feel free to type that in. We'll also have some time at the end um, if you want to ask any questions. Um, we do have two handouts available right now that you can download. Um, we have the user guide for carriers, and we have memo status definitions, which we'll talk about in a little, in a little bit. And at the end of the presentation, we'll also be putting the presentation on here for you to be able to download right away. No questions at the time, so moving on to navigating. So this is the home page of Memo Manager, uh, known as the Memo Summary <coughs> section. Uh, one thing that you can do to quickly access memos is clicking on Memo Numbers to enter specific uh, memo numbers. And once you click on that, it'll pop you up to the Memo Quick View. You can type uh, different memo numbers, each separated by a comma. You can just type one memo number in and click View. Now, if you type multiple memos in, um, you'll get this screen here where you'll be able to click Next to take you to the next memo number that you've input. Going back to the quick view, uh, if you click on Memos Last View, Memo Manager will open the last viewed memos, um, whether it be one or multiple that you've had. Next section would be how to search um, by ARC number. You can enter an ARC number to search for all of the memos under that number. You can also enter the home office location and click Include Entire Organization, and that will bring up all of the memos for that home office and its branches. If you look below the memo aging section, um, users are able to view a listing of memos that fall within an age range by clicking the specific age range link. So we have um, the different uh, aging of each memo. You see it's grouped into uh, 30 days, 31 to 60 days, and so on. Um, if you want to choose those specific memos, then you click on that specific age range link, and then the memos that fall into that category will display down below in the memo list. And again, these are for open memos. The memo activity section um, provides users with a total count for the number of memos, uh, open memos, uh, by activity for uh, anything that's had correspondence in the last 10 days. So you click on that. It'll bring up a list of it, um, any memos that have been disputed, any memos that are nearly aged or close to that age uh, limit that you have set, or any that have a payment pending. And if you click on any of those, uh, it's basically doing a search, and it brings up all the memos under the list. Now we can move on to the advanced search section. Um, you can customize searching uh, for specific memos as well as saving different search options. You click on Edit Search to see advanced search options. And the primary status um, depends on the status that's selected in the home page. For instance, what we're, the screen that we're looking at now, you see down at the bottom, it's in the Open tab. So when you click on Edit Search, it will only search for open memos. If you want to search for closed or inactive, you would have to click on that tab first and then click on Edit Search. We have a question coming in. Uh, wants to know how you can find the ARC number for an agency. Um, you can use different tools that we have, a carrier dashboard, um, to pull that information up, or if you have the uh, agency list as well. Um, Memo Manager doesn't have a listing of all uh, ARC numbers for you to search by. You just input the specific uh, ARC number that you're looking for. And uh, Karen, just in, in addition, if you're not sure about the ARC number, you can give us a call. Uh, you can contact the Carrier Help Desk, phd at arcscorp.com, or give us a call, 703-816-8007, and we'll be more than happy to assist you. So after clicking on Edit Search, this is the screen that comes up, and we'll go over a couple of these. Um, 
different uh, search options that you can click on. Again, as we mentioned, the primary status is based off of whatever tab you have chosen on the home page. The secondary status, um, you can choose that as well from the drop down. And like we said, one of the handouts that's available is the memo status definition. And that gives you a breakdown of what each status means. Uh, gives you a little more information on that. You can also search by the ticket number. Um, now the ticket number is whatever was input when the memo was being created. Uh, so it will search off of that, whatever is in the memo available. If you notice, ticket number as well as memo number, agency name, and a couple other fields have a, uh, a designator here, uh, which is to indicate that it's a wildcard field. Uh, so you do not have to enter the specific text that's in um, that field that you're looking for. You can enter a minimum of two characters followed by an asterisk, and that will bring up um, anything that has those two characters in it. For instance, 8-9 asterisks will return anything beginning with 8-9 if you're looking in the ticket number. So you can use that in any of the fields that have that indicator available. Search by the amount. Um, there's multiple search options for the amount. It can be less than, greater than, uh, equal to, to give you uh, more flexibility. Um, it's important to remember that original and current amounts can be different. Um, if you issued an amount and there's a partial payment made, then the current amount will be less than the original amount. You can also search by system provider. Uh, the system provider was granted access to GDS, and you can search by that. Uh, system provider that's available. Um, you can search for memos that have a hold placed on them. Uh, this is more for our uh, TRS memos or revenue recovery memos, um, and that's placed on hold so no changes uh, in status can occur for those memos. You can also search by the last correspondence that was made. Um, you can click on who um, made the last correspondence, whether it be the carrier, the GDS or the travel agency, as well as the date that it was posted on. Once you click on uh, or select and input all of your search options, and you would just need to, uh, you can save your search that um, you have selected, so you can use it for future um, instances when you go into Memo Manager. So once you click on Save This Search, um, you'll get an option to save the current search and you'll enter a name for it. You also have an option to run this search on login. So whenever you open up Memo Manager, if you have that checkbox selected, that's the option that will appear, um, or the list of memos that will appear will go through that specific search option. And going back to the Memo Summary screen, you can access your saved searches um, by clicking on the Save Searches button. And you can run it there. You can also choose to have those run on login if you want to change the different searches. And here you can delete any of the previous saved searches that you've had. When you enter a search, um, you'll see that the search criteria appears in the memo summary screen. Uh, and you'll see, for instance, this one is a search for any memo uh, over 91 days. So if you want to remove all the search criteria, you just click on the clear button, and that removes all of the search criteria. If you want to just click one specific criteria that you want to remove, you click on the X that's highlighted there. As we mentioned before, there's different tabs in the memo list, um, open, close, and active, and all. And since there are multiple memos that appear, you can show you can choose or select multiple memos at a time. And depending on which tab you're under, there are different actions that can be performed. Um, I'm not going to cover too much in corresponding or closing or disputing. That will be covered in the next uh, webinar. Uh, for this one, uh, we'll talk about uh, viewing or exporting. So we see that this option is there for uh, memos that are open. But you can select the other options as well for multiple um, we see in the closed uh, section that it doesn't have as many options as the other one. That's because the memo has been closed and you can't do anything with it. Um, afterwards, you can view it, export, export it, or correspond or attach information as well. 
an active section as well. Um, you can't do anything until it becomes active again. And that information um, we'll cover again in the next one. And then if you want to just put it in the, the All tab to make it easier to search um, or to search for all of the different memo options that are available, you see that there are different uh, options in the drop-down that you can access. One of the options that is available is to export memo information. Um, you can click to export um, all of the memos that have been listed, or you can select the particular number of memos and then export that specific information. And you see there's three different options for you to export information, uh, CSV, PDF, and TXT. Uh, this is what the CSV option looks like, pretty much an Excel file with uh, all the information of the memo. And that same information is available in PDF. It has it listed um, with all the different options under it, and it looks the same for a text file. So it, it all has the same information, um, but it all depends on how you want to use it afterwards to whichever uh, option you want to select. Now let's look at the memo themselves and the memo details. Uh, most of the information in the memos is just provided as informational and it's not modifiable. Um, everything should be input when you're creating the memos. Um, there are not too many fields that can be modified after the memo has been created. So starting off uh, the memo details, we see we have the memo type, we have the original amount that's showing, the balance, the agency, you see the agency number that's listed, you see the current age of the memo, um, we see the passenger's name, and the supplier, which in this case is the same as the carrier. Uh, moving further down, we see the memo details section. It gives a little more information on the status, uh, the date that the memo was issued, the date that the memo was loaded. Um, those can be different if you issue a memo say on Monday but you don't load it until Tuesday. You can input that information as well when you're creating the memo. And it'll show us the status there and again in our handout we have uh, the memo status definitions which gives us information on that. Um, and we also have resolution type which you can change to our different revenue recovery uh, services that we offer uh, and there's our hold option as well. Ticket information provides the information that was input when the memo was being created. Again, this cannot be modified uh, once the memo is created. So it has a carrier number, ticket number, the amount, the date it was issued, the passenger, and the employee ID as well. Following that, we have our correspondence field. Um, notice there's three different tabs. You can input uh, public correspondence, which will be made available to a uh, travel agency and anyone viewing that memo. Private correspondence will just be uh, available to you and your organization. And all will cover that uh, the correspondence for all of it. And again, the correspondence we'll be covering in our next webinar as well in more detail. Memo reasons section, um, the carrier supplier reason, again, can only be provided at the creation of the memo. Um, one important thing to keep in mind is not to input uh, sensitive data such as credit card numbers. Um, if it is detected, uh, the count will be encrypted and the leading numbers will be replaced by an asterisk with only the last four digits being displayed. So even if you do input the entire credit card number, it will not show in the actual memo. The same applies for the attachments. If you look at our attachment section, you can add a file. Um, there are a couple file types that are not accepted, which we have listed here. Um, and again, please do not attach uh, anything that includes sensitive data, um, such as credit cards, such as credit card numbers. Uh, once the file has been uploaded, um, to open it, you simply click on the file name. Um, you may have some travel agencies that upload uh, certain files, and all you have to do when they upload it, you'll be able to see it here. You can just click on the file name to be able to view it. <coughs> Below that, we have the memo financial details, which is information that is input at the creation of the memo. It's not modifiable. Um, this is to uh, 
kind of give a, a very visual, uh, a great visual of the differences of why the memo is being charged. Agencies have the ability to dispute memos, and um, like we said in the administration section, there's a limit of disputes that can be done per memo, which the carrier sets. And this is the section where those disputes will be appearing. And uh, we'll cover that in more detail in the next webinar. The entity specific information um, allows you to enter uh, any data that you like in our flex field. Um, keep in mind that these are only visible within your company. Um, these are searchable fields. Um, you can search in the different flex fields in our advanced search section. Uh, to be able to uh, search. And this helps to categorize memos um, for carriers. and They use it for uh, back office files and things of that nature. And when you click on um, to update the flex fields, this is the <coughs> tab that you get. And you'll be able to enter um, any information that you like. Moving down the memo, we get to the payment section. On the IAR section, you'll see uh, if there are any payments that were made by uh, the, the agency, and that will be synced automatically with the role manager, and it will appear here in the IAR section. If the agency makes the payment directly to you, you can input the payment here uh, in the non-IAR section where it says record payment, and this is what that looks like. You input the amount, the payer, the number, the form of payment, payment date, and any comments that you have. And again, the warning um, you know, should not enter any sensitive information in that information to be stored into Memo Manager. The GDS access section, um, the carrier can grant access to the GDS if the GDS is a Memo Manager subscriber. Um, one important thing to keep in mind is that you can only grant access to the GDS if there is ticket information present in the memo. Uh, and keep in mind that you cannot modify that once the memo is created, so it's important to always include ticket information if possible when creating a memo, so that way, if need be, you can grant access to the GDS. Carrier supplier information, it contains the contact information for your carrier. Um, you should verify that your information uh, is showing the correct values. Uh, if it does not have the correct values, you can notify the carrier help desk. Uh, you can send us an email at chd at rcorp.com on what needs to be changed, and we can update that for you. Uh, keep in mind that the ticketing policy website you can update in the administration section. And down at the bottom, we have our terms of use, privacy policy, and contact us, which takes you to our contact uh, page on rcorp.com uh, for our members. So that was a, an overview of the memo manager tool, specifically the home page and what a memo section looks like. Um, our next webinar will cover how to create a memo, how to close a memo, how to reactivate a memo, the different memo types, corresponding in detail, and handling disputes in detail as well. If you also uh, ever need uh, additional training, if you'd like a detailed training for your carrier, you can submit a training request uh, that's located at Carrier Education under Resources in MyARC. And as mentioned before, if you have any sort of questions at all, you can give us a call at the Carrier Help Desk, uh, chd at rcorp.com, uh, email or 855-816-8007. Okay, and just an important reminder, um, it's very important for you to keep your MyArc account active in order to access Memo Manager, especially for those who don't use it often. I know for those who use it on a regular basis, um, they don't have any problems with that. But uh, we do have now and then some issues, some users who cannot access Memo Manager anymore because their MyArc account has been deleted due to non-use. So very important. And if you have any access issues like a password reset, or any questions regarding that, you can also give us a call and we'll be able to help you with that as well. And um, definitely see, take a look here to see if we have any questions. OK, 
Elisa wanted to know when the next Memo Manager webinar will be held. Uh, we should have that information uh, shortly, and you'll definitely get notified through email um, when that will be coming up. Okay. And <coughs> another question is, besides the ticket number, is there any other requirements that need to be entered in order to grant GDS access? Um, with regards to GDS access, the ticket number itself is all the GDS requires. Of course, they will need access to, they go through my ARC in order to get to memo manager. So the ticket itself, once it's there, is what they need. So like Kerson was saying, if you do not enter the ticket number while you're creating the memo, once the memo has been saved, you won't be able to go back in and edit and add the ticket information in there. So that means having to create another memo in order to for the ticket to show up. So that's very important to remember. If at any point you think you may require the GDS, come in and take a look, then you will need to put in the ticket information in the memo as you create it. And it should always be good practice to input as much information as you can when you're creating the memo, um, just so you have that information there, so the agency can view it, and so the GDS can view it as well, so they can understand the situation. Okay, I see a question here from Cheryl, it says, uh, the 138 reason code currently available for use in memo manager, uh, let's see. So it says I paid 138 reason codes currently available for use in memo manager. I have no idea. Exactly. Right. So I'm not sure, uh, Cheryl, are you talking about um, for each carrier's reason code? Every or? carrier has their own memo reason code. So there's no set limit. Some I've seen it as low as four. I've seen it as high as over 600. And so um, we are working with the debit memo group to um, the debit memo working group to standardize carrier memo reasons. We do have a standard list, but it's several hundred, and we're in the process of mapping carrier memo reasons to the standard list getting it implemented into Memo Analyzer with the goal of getting it implemented into Memo Manager. Okay, so Cheryl, so for, for what Sarah is saying, um, right now each carrier will have their own memo reasons. I think in the future it's going to be standardized where... Mm -hmm. So we're going to take any current subscribed carrier at ARC and take their memo reasons and match them to the debit memo working group reasons. Carriers would not be required to do anything except send me a list of their memos and we do the matching. And so what that does is it categorizes and adds extra information to the memo that will allow a travel agency to better understand why the memo was issued. Right. And a question from Jessica, she wanted to know just to confirm the issue date is for the date you are creating the debit memo and not the issue date for the ticket. That's correct. That's correct. Um, this is referencing to the memo that you're creating when you look at the issue, memo issuance date. And then let me see another question. Also the question about the presentation. Um, it has been loaded into the handout section, so you should be able to download that now. Um, if you look towards the right, you'll be able to see um, a handout section as well as the user guide, the status definitions. We now have the uh, presentation available there. Right. Just click on the drop-down uh, where it says handouts, and you'll be able to see all three presentations. <coughs> and I see, can you email a copy of the presentation that's been um, answered? Are TRS reason codes unique? That's for ticket resolution service. Yes, so the TRS reason codes, there are, I think, seven. Unreported sales, duplicate usage, chargebacks. and then five types of fraudulent chargebacks. Um, they are located on our corporate website. So you can go and get the five types of uh, fraudulent credit card chargebacks include, you know, no signature, no off code. I, I don't have them memorized, but they're five different. Right. Okay. 
So, mm -hmm. And then the next one is, will the carrier dashboard be updated to show the home office number for each agency? This is something that, um, although it's outside of memo manager, I know it does work um, as far as if you're looking for a uh, memo number. So that is something that is uh, on the books as far as so, updating. So I would say we'll make sure that whoever's running the carrier right. dashboard gets that information. Right. As an enhancement. That's true. Give it to Crystal. Yes. And um, any other questions? And outside of the webinar, if you have a question that pops up and you need an answer, you can always send us an email as well, and we'll be able to answer you, like, you know, via email or give us a call. And if you want us to call you, you can also let us know in the email, and we can discuss any questions you have in more detail. All right. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for attending today. We hope that you were able to benefit from uh, the information. And again, the handouts are available um, on there. We have the presentation, we have the user guide, and the status definition. And if any other questions come up, we'll uh, email and talk directly to the people who um, have sent them in. So thank you very much, and you have a good day. Thank you.